kind of wanted to start off by asking you uh, to briefly describe what is anarchism and more specifically anarcho-syndicalism. Well, I think the best uh, characterization that I know was given by one of the leading uh, uh, thinkers and activists in the modern uh, anarcho-syndicalist uh, world, Rudolf Rocker, who described uh, anarchism in general as uh, not a specific set of uh, beliefs that provides uh, particular answers to all the questions that can arise, but rather uh, what he called a general tendency in the history of, uh, of humanity, uh, which aims to uh, 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 inquire into the nature of social, economic, political structures uh, to see, uh, determine, to detect uh, structures of hierarchy and domination and to challenge them to demonstrate their legitimacy. They're not self-justifying. And if they cannot defend their legitimacy on some plausible grounds, then to dismantle them and reconstruct them from below. And to do this in the context of the existing society, developing alternative institutions that are more free and more just in the uh, hope of uh, moving on to a world of uh, free associations of uh, uh, workers, communities, controlling their own institutions, their own fate uh, uh, in uh, association with one another, various kinds of federal arrangements and so on. That's the basic uh, thrust of anar anarchism altogether, in my view, and of uh, anarcho-syndicalism in particular, which is designed for uh, complex industrial societies. So you're talking about workers controlling their own work and controlling the enterprises of that work and expanding out that to the community? That would be one aspect, crucial aspect of it. In fact, anarcho-syndicalism kind of shades off into uh, left anti-Bolshevik Marxism. Uh, people like Anton Panikuk, Paul Matic, Karl Korsh, and others, and, and sympathetic uh, relationships and ideas. And the great uh, anarchist achievements, like the, the 1936 uh, Spanish Revolution before it was crushed, uh, did have the strong and sympathetic support of uh, left Marxists who felt uh, a community of interests and commitments. Workers controlling their own work. How is this uh, organized and how does it arise? How does it arise? Oh, it's all over the place. Uh, first of all, it's a constant development. It takes place all over. Uh, there were um, efforts in Eastern Europe, for example, um, uh, self-management in Yugoslavia. Uh, right now in the, uh, in the United States, in the, in, in the old uh, decaying rust belt, where industries are collapsing, uh, they're being replaced to a certain extent by worker-owned and partially worker-managed enterprises. Now, there's one huge institution, that's uh, Mondragon, the great conglomerate in Spain, which is uh, uh, worker-owned, not uh, the delegates selected by, managers selected by workers, but not actually worker-managed, uh, which is a, a, con a collection of uh, uh, heavy industries, uh, banks, uh, hospitals, uh, uh, community living, and so on. Do they rise, arise kind of spontaneously? And is there any kind of one specific, like is there a system that regulates how the workers uh, organize themselves? Like maybe in the US, uh, like they do it one way, and then over in Spain, Mondragon, they'll do it a different way. Is, it, is there any kind of well, there's no vision? There's no leadership or <clears throat> Bible. Um, uh, things develop on the basis of the circumstances that exist. So the conditions in, uh, say, the R Rust Belt in northern Ohio and in uh, 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 Catalonia and uh, Aragon in uh, 1936 are quite different. And the backgrounds are quite different. But, but there were similarities in the way the, uh, the takeover by working people and peasants of their own lives proceeded. Let's say that Mondragon wants to have an association with uh, somebody in the Rust Belt. That That's you were just happening, in fact. Okay. I don't know how far it'll go, but the uh, 
uh, one of the major U.S. unions, the Steelworkers, is now has entered into uh, some kinds of interactions with Mondragon to try to work out ways to develop a Mondragon-type system in the uh, old industrial sections of the United States and uh, revive them on the basis of uh, worker ownership and community ownership and control. If it is correct, as I believe it is, that a fundamental element of human nature is the need for uh, creative work, for creative inquiry, for, uh, for free creation uh, without the arbitrary limiting effects of coercive institutions, then, of course, it will follow that a decent society should maximize the possibilities for this fundamental human characteristic to be realized. That means trying to overcome the uh, elements of repression and oppression and destruction and coercion that exist in any existing society, ours for example, as a historical residue. Now a federated, decentralized uh, system of free associations incorporating economic as well as social institutions would be what I refer to as anarcho-syndicalism, and it seems to me that it is the appropriate uh, form of social organization for an advanced technological society in which human beings do not have to be forced into the position of tools, of cogs in the machine, in which the creative urge the, uh, that I think is intrinsic to human nature will in fact be able to realize itself in whatever way it will. I don't know all the ways in which it will.